It's the Japanese pony car that helped jumpstart America's love affair with imports. It was kicking WRC butt and taking names before the WRX and Evo even showed up to the party. <laughs> This is everything you need to know about the Toyota Celica. The year was 1970 and American muscle cars were selling like freaking hotcakes. Japanese cars, on the other hand, weren't so much. Toyota realized that to sell more cars to Americans, they was gonna have to start building them more suited to American tastes. Bigger engines, bigger seats. <laughs> At the Tokyo Motor Show that October, they launched a new two-door coupe designed for the worldwide market, meaning it could fit drivers as tall as me. It was named the Celica, which came from a Latin word that meant celestial or <laughs> heavenly. It was based on the Toyota Carina, and it was a little bigger than the ultra-compact Corolla. Of course, it was practical and affordable, but the Celica had some more. It was sporty! And it launched in the US in the middle of 1971 with a price significantly lower than the Mustang. Under the long hood was a 1.9 liter inline four that made barely 90 heavenly ponies. <laughs> To top it off, the best-selling Mustang had gotten a case of the bloat, and both its weight and waistline were increasing. Just like that crazy TV doctor's time-traveling telephone booth, the Celica was small on the outside, but big on the inside. Did I just make a Doctor Who joke in Up to Speed? It was also the first Japanese car to be partially built on an automated assembly line, which gave it better build quality than its American competitors. It had standard front disc brakes, a sweet four-speed manual transmission, and independent McPherson strut suspension up front. The little Japanese bad boy car had a lot of things going for it, and people started buying them. One of those early cars went to Swede Ove Anderson, who kicked off the Celica's long racing career in the WRC with a ninth place finish in their first rally. He formed Toyota Team Europe and kept racing while he waited for boost and even more drive wheels. Soon, higher performance GT trims were introduced and both engine size and sales crept higher. In 76, they introduced a sportier, more practical lift back model with folding rear seats and a 2.2 liter engine. You asked for it, the Toyota Celica GT liftback. The new trim had vertical taillights and louvers on the C-pillar, and it looked suspiciously like a little Mustang. Suspicious or not, it was a huge hit, and Motor Trend named the Celica their import car of the year. Toyota had already sold over a million of the Japanese pony cars worldwide before 1977 was done. The second gen Celica debuted in 78 with a new look penned at Toyota's SoCal Design Studio by former child actor David Stolari. The new car was a little bigger and more comfortable with a low belt line and expansive windows. It had the same 2.2 liter engine, but the already good Celica was so improved that it won Motor Trend Import Car of the Year again, only two years after its first win. In the rest of the world, the Celica was offered in what was called a full choice system with two body styles, a bunch of engine sizes, a bunch of transmissions, a bunch of optional features. And at one point there were 49 unique Celica variants for sale in Japan. This car is confusing as fuck, so I'm sorry if is wrong. It was at this point that the Celica started to spawn some celestial children. First, in 1979, a new trim called the Celica Supra was born. You ever heard of it, you little pigs, you little piggies? I bet when I said that word, some of you were making ramen and you were like, huh? Supra? I bet some of you were in the bathtub and you heard Supra and you're like, what? And you knocked your laptop in the bathtub and then you electrocuted yourself. Rest in peace, I'm sorry. Go back. <laughs> It had a Celica butt with a longer front end to fit a 110 horsepower, 2.6 liter straight six under the hood. The rest is tuner history. We covered this car in one of our first episodes of Up to Speed. Oh, you know what? That reminds me, please subscribe right now. Then in 1980, the four-door Celica Camry came out in Japan. It was just a Toyota Carina with a Celica Super front end, but it soon spun off one of the most sedate and successful sedans in America. Right about when Indiana Jones was trying to raid the Ark of the Covenant before the bad guys did, the redesigned third-gen Celica came out. It got a full 
early 80s makeover, complete with flat body panels, boxy lines, and aerodynamic headlights that tilted forward just like the Lamborghini Miura. You are so beautiful. The interior took a futuristic leap forward too, with a digital dash and one of the world's first in-car GPS navigation system. In 82, the first turbocharged Celica finally went on sale in Japan. And you better believe, a fire-breathing 320 horsepower Group B rally car and a few 180 horsepower homologation models weren't far behind. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Celica twin cam turbo was only rear wheel drive and it really didn't stand a chance at winning the championship against its all wheel drive competitors. But that didn't stop it from beating up on its big brothers a little bit, especially when the fam was road tripping in Africa. The Celica won most of the WRC rallies on that continent over the next four years and became known as the king of Africa. It had been almost 40 years since I won Baja, and I had been trying to make ends meet as a comedic actor in Los Angeles. After 10 years of pounding the pavement and getting rejected at every turn, i.e. losing every part I auditioned for to Josh Gad, I mean, what's the attraction? Anyway, I was feeling pretty low down, so I went to the only place I knew I had friends, my local pet boys. The guys welcomed me with open arms, we talked through the night. They listened, like really listened. When the sun came up, Jack pointed to a dojo at the top of a mountain. It was time to forge a new path, to find a new way. I trained nonstop for months, learning everything I could about every possible car. I did strenuous voice exercises so that I could scream louder than any other car host on the internet. Finally, I began to dream in cars, and I knew that my training was complete. It was time to return to the mortal realm and conquer the final frontier of comedic automotive content, YouTube. I owe it all to my friends, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Toyota was totally revamping Celicas every four years at this point. The fourth gen debuted in 85 in a softer, more aerodynamic shape. And bum, 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 they switched from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive. The new transverse engine layout let them redesign the suspension and add McPherson struts to the rear, which gave it better handling. Dan Gurney's All-American Racers team started dominating the IMSA race series, proving Celicas could hustle around a racetrack as well as a rally stage, even with front wheel drive. But Toyota still had rally on the brake because they soon introduced the 190 horsepower turbocharged two liter Celica GT4, AKA the all track. Burr, burr, burr. It was the most powerful two liter to come out of Japan. And this bad boy had full time all wheel drive with a center locking differential. The Celica was finally able to beat up on its rally brothers, Lars, and Carlos Sainz took home the 1990 WRC Drivers' Championship. Toyota was the first Japanese manufacturer to race all-wheel drive cars in WRC and beat the European manufacturers to win rally titles. Right on schedule, a super curvy Celica facelift arrived at the end of 1989. All the Celicas were vastly improved with upgraded interiors, smoother engines, and bigger wheels and tires. Meanwhile, older Celicas were actually winning awards from the press for their reliability. The new all track got more aggressive and everybody but the US got a limited run of special editions with lighter bumpers, a vented hood, better intercooler, and a new ECU tune. The newly pumped up Toyota was slaying it in WRC, winning the driver's championship three years in a row starting in 92. Yep. You guessed it, after four years of the ultra round body style, the sculpted Supra-esque sixth gen Celica arrived in 93. Huh? Supra? Did he say Supra? Oh no! The rest of the world got a sweet new GT4 making 250 Hersh purrs, and in the States, we didn't get it. 
That's a shame because this was the coolest homologation Celica yet. It had an upgraded turbo and super strut suspension, a lightweight aluminum hood, and a big Supra wing. What's that? That's all kind of normal stuff you say? Well, it also left the factory with water injection, a water sprayer on the intercooler, and all the plumbing needed for a fully functional anti-lag system. That's cool as From the freaking factory! Toyota's successful racing streak continued with the new GT4. The 6th gen Celica was the first rally car to use an anti-lag system, which is common practice now. Rod Millen won the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb three times and set a record time that stood for 10 years. <laughs> Toyota Team Europe was still doing really well in the 1995 WRC season two. Actually, they were doing really well until Rally Catalonia when they were found to be cheating. Oh my God, oh my God. Earlier that year, those pesky FIA rules guys had decided that WRC cars were creeping closer to dangerous Group B speeds again. And they made all the fastest turbo cars install a restrictor plate to limit horsepower. But someone at the Toyota team came up with a brilliant workaround that let air go right past the restrictor plate. Toyota lawyered up and threw a fit. No oh, way, you can't punish us. We had no idea what was going on, man. The FIA was like, even if it wasn't your idea, it's still your problem. Now go to your room. Oh, what? Guys, I don't want to hear it. I will call you when dinner's ready. I hate you. I know you don't mean that. Yes, I do. I wish FIA wasn't my dad. Some independent teams still ran GT4s in the 96 and 97 WRC season, but that was pretty much the end of the Celica's rally glory. Toyota took a little more than four years, bringing the seventh and final generation Celica to the market this time. They showed a dramatically different concept car called the XYR at the 99 Detroit Motor Show, and the 2000 Celica came out looking almost exactly like it. It was angular and chiseled, just like my pecs, and the long running coupe, convertible, and GT4 models were all axed in favor of a simpler all hatchback lineup. The same dude who managed the third gen MR2 development, Tadashi Nakagawa, was also in charge of the latest Celica. His mission was to make it cheaper and lighter, which he did by eliminating redundant interior controls, making the sunroof out of plastic and using a smaller 1.8 liter engine. But it wasn't just any old 1.8 liter engine. It was a high rev VVTI 1.8 liter engine. That means variable valve timing with intelligence, you knucklehead. <laughs> The base GT trim got the 140 horsepower 1ZZ FE and the GTS got the 180 horsepower 2ZZ GE, which had VVT LI. That means variable valve timing and lift with intelligence, you knuckleheads. So it was like Toyota's version of the VTEC <laughs> and was one of a handful of engines with a red line over 8,000 RPM and making more than 100 horsepower per liter. It's such a good engine that Lotus used it in the Elise and Exige. There were a ton of TRD performance parts available, and there was even a factory body cat with a front fascia, side skirts, and big boy rear wing. It was all the stuff car enthusiasts should have wanted, but it was all coming at a time when the import scene was starting to cool off and more people wanted SUVs. Sales dropped off fast and furious, and the Celica was pulled from the American market at the end of 2005. Over more than 35 years, Toyota made millions of the affordable sports cars, and the Celica may now be gone, but its spirit lives on in our heart. Hit that subscribe button. Check out this episode of Science Squad. Check out this episode of Up to Speed. Follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut, at Donut Media. You like my shirt? Go buy you one. Shop.donut.media. I love you.